feel the inferior pole of the patella come just off the uh, patella tendon at the level of the inferior pole. So here's, here's inferior pole. We'll feel the patellar tendon or roll over it and right at that level uh, we'll make our uh, high and tight lateral portal. And then typically if you take this marker and kind of just roll over. A pearl for bone blocks such as bone patellar bone grafts is to prepare in such a way as to ensure easy passage. As a guidance, the femoral and tibial bone blocks may be adjusted to around 20 millimeters and 25 millimeters respectively using a ronger or saw. We recommend making the femoral bone block 0.5 to 1 millimeter smaller than the tibial component. When drilling holes for suture placement, care should be taken to ensure placement parallel to the cortex to avoid the risk of interference from fixation or cutting into sutures during tensioning later in the procedure. For grafts involving a bone block, the passing suture should be placed more proximally along the bone to guide the tip of the bone block during passage, as opposed to more centrally placed sutures. Additionally, the bone tendon junction should be clearly marked for both femoral and tibial bone block. In this video, we can see harvest of a quadriceps tendon autograft. There's a, is a minimally invasive approach using endoscopic harvest. The knee is placed in 90 degrees of flexion and 2.5 to 3 centimeter transfer skin incision is made over the superior border of the patella. The prepatellar bursa is incised longitudinally and the quadriceps tendon is then carefully exposed. A tendon separator is used to determine the thickness of the graft, which is generally around 5 millimeters. The knife is pushed proximal to the same mark and the tendon strip is then cut subcutaneously by a special tendon cutter and the graft is retrieved through the skin incision. A measurement is then ultimately taken to ensure appropriate graft length. In this video, we demonstrate the view from the anterior lateral portal. A transpatellar accessory portal may also be employed as an additional viewing portal for the femoral insertion side of the ACL and the intracondylar notch. Although no reconstructions can achieve true anatomic and isometric positioning, more recent studies have described how anatomic placement of the femoral tunnel positioned slightly anterior to the center of the anterior medial and posterior lateral bundles was the most isometric. When reaming through the desired location of the tunnel, the knee should be in about 110 to 120 degrees of flexion. When using an ins- Here we demonstrate drilling of the tibial tunnel with suture passage using a flip cutter. Once preparations have been made, the sutures on the bone block should be drawn through the loop of the passing suture, which can then be advanced through the femoral tunnel through gentle tension on the passing sutures. During this step, a hemostat may be placed through the anterior medial portal to help ensure proper positioning and facilitate graft passage, with the goal of orienting the graft in such a way where the soft tissue is posterior and inferior relative to the bone block. During this stage, it can be beneficial to shut off irrigation to the joint. This serves a dual purpose in providing both improved visualization as well as preventing obstruction of the field of view due to any bleeding that's present and prevents the risk of excessive graft movement due to irrigation pressure. Ensuring optimal tension on the graft prior to fixation is crucial to optimizing patient outcomes post-operatively. Inadequate graft tensioning can result in excessive knee laxity, thereby increasing the propensity for the development of osteoarthritis.